Hi there, I'm Ben Benjamin um, from Torbay Hospital. I'm really sorry I can't be with you, with you today, but I want to talk about uh, our experience of enhanced recovery in medicine at South Devon at Torbay Hospital. What is enhanced recovery? Well, we know about enhanced recovery in surgery. I think it is a bit different in medicine, it, um, but uh, to my mind, the key thing is it's actually involving patients in the, their recovery process. That is patients and their carers, and the really important thing is for them to have definite goals. The thing is, I think that, that patients, doctors, carers, nurses all work together with the patient to agree um, how, how to get them better most quickly. Um, why do it? Well, clearly we want to improve the patient and care experience. It's been proven to work in surgery in a group of patients. We be believe that it can work in medicine um, and clearly it's our experience that patients want to go home as soon as they are able to um, and sh as soon as it's safe and clearly we want to uh, save money by having fewer bed days. Who are we? Well, Liz Charles is our, um, our Deputy Chief Exec and Executive Sponsor. I'm the clinical lead and we have other people there as you can see and uh, Becky and Debbie are very much involved and I think they're in the audience today. What patients? Well, we've had to think, you know, what patients would be similar to the surgical patients and we've cho chosen to begin with patients with acute sepsis and define that as patients needing IV antibiotics. Um, and this is our pilot work so far, um, but we're in that group of people from our experience we're trying to identify which of those pa patients are going to most likely to benefit from a, an enhanced recovery programme. So again, the benefits to improve the patient and care experience, reduce length of stay and readmission, but there's other things uh, as part of that, it's really rapid mobilisation, um, getting patients up, out of bed, in their own clothes, more mobile, getting their drips down, getting them get, having all fluid rather than intravenous fluid, intensive OT and physio, um, and, get, and not allowing them to stay in bed for longer than is necessary. What can we measure? Well, clearly the patient experience, we, are, we need to measure that and find out how, uh, um, how this whole process improves the patient experience. We need to look at their length of stay clearly, number of bed days used by patients with infection and, com and compare that to what we were, we were using previously, look at their readmission and probably easier things to measure are things like time to mobilisation, how quickly patients get in their own clothes, get out of bed, how quickly they're drinking fluids, how quickly their drip comes down and how long they need to stay on IV antibiotics which keeps them in hospital. Uh, what's happened so far? Well a whole load of things has happened so far. This project has, has been much more complicated than I ever thought it would be. Um, we've got a dedicated project team looking at every stage of the process and we've, in the next slide you'll see this, the state, the, uh, the mapping of the current state um, and we are um, on a weekly basis looking at various aspects of that and involved in, in uh, simulating and walking the process. We've had to do a lot of baseline measurement, seeing where we are so far and where we want to get to. This has involved uh, creating a, a patient di diary, a medical leaflet for the, for the doctors. Um, we've considered a lot what happens when patients first come to hospital and rapid um, administration of IV antibiotics, cannulating, um, getting a, a single admission document uh, from the GPs um, and also um, a PGD for intravenous antibiotics that can be given by the nurses in ED. So after that they come to the um, medical assessment unit and then we think we identify the appropriate patients and, and, and do daily target session, setting. As, as I said, the improvement pathway, I'm not expecting you to read that, but a huge amount of work has gone on in looking at all the different stages of this process. Remind me to tell you that the whole process, the whole map, is very long and very detailed and as part of this we've really had to think about a whole a very large number of processes involved um, and picking it apart and trying to make it better. So the key thing is once they're on EAU the daily target setting, mobilising within 24 hours, getting dressed, no pyjamas, no flappy nighties. Um, you, it really is difficult getting patients own clothes in and that's something we're really trying to address. How can we actually make sure patients have actually got clothes to get dressed in the next morning if they come in in the, in the evening. Um, all fluids, do they really need a drip? 
Um, can we actually take the drips down and get pa patients drinking? That obviously helps them to get mobilised if they're not, not tied to a drip. They sleep better if the drip, isn't, drip machine isn't beeping all night. That's, uh, and they, as part of that, we've actually had to redesign our whole fluid prescription chart and we need to give um, permission f for the nurses to be able to give all rather than IV fluids and we're working through that process at the moment. And the key part document in this is the patient diary and I'm just going to show you, if you look on day one, we, we ask the patient and get them to fill this in. Is, is your pain controlled if they're in pain? Um, that may keep them, keep them in. Have they vomited or been sick? Clearly that's, they can't drink if that's the case. Have they passed urine? Have they got up out of bed? Are they in their own clothes? Are they dressed? Our feeling is that you know, having people in nighties all day in hospital is not the way to get people home quickly. And on, uh, on each day, we actually set them a goal to say, we hope by, the, by today you will do, the, do, do these things and to get the patient to agree to that and be involved in that. Um, so this is very much work in progress. We're working in our EAU, which is our medical assessment unit, and in the specialist uh, care of the elderly ward and thinking about how we can actually transfer this process from the EAU to the specialty ward. We're testing the process um, and trying to refine the methodology. Um, we're scoping for other conditions apart from infection where we can apply these, these uh, principles. Um, we're involving not only patients and carers, but also all of the um, uh, clinical staff in the redesigned plans, and it's part of our sequin target for the coming year. Um, this is just a few pictures of some of the people being involved. We're very lucky here in, um, in Torbay to have a simulation suite, and we're able to uh, look carefully at all the processes in a simulation suite away from the ward, um, and we have volunteer um, surrogate patients and all the staff involved really working together to think how can we actually make this process actually work. And thanks very much for uh, allowing me to talk to you on this video. Uh, um, and I'm sure um, that Becky and uh, Debbie will be able to help you with any questions. Thanks. Bye.